Number 10. Kristoff and Kadira Von Doom Kristoff and Kadira Von Doom are the children of Storm and Doctor Doom. They come from the novel series X-Men The Chaos Engine, which is actually a trilogy, wherein we explore what would happen if three great villains took control of the Marvel Universe, creating their own version of a perfect world using the Cosmic Cube. It starts off with Doom's variation on this world. In this reality, Doctor Doom has made Storm his wife, and she rules by his side as his empress. The union of these powerful characters produces two children, Kristoff and Kadira. We can assume, of course, being the children of both Doom and Storm, that they would be physically, mentally, and demonstrably powerful when it came to their abilities, especially being raised by these two powerhouses. Also, if I wasn't clear about this, this is an alternate reality, so if you're like, when did this happen? It is not main continuity. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more children of the X-Men, they have a lot of kids if we you know, surf through the multiverse so we could do it for you. If you want that part three, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number nine. Nocturne. Nocturne is the daughter of Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch. Obviously, not from the main continuity. In fact, Talia Wagner is known for being a part of a multiversal hero team, the Exiles. Nocturne is from the alternate reality of Earth 2182. In fact, back on her home reality, which first appeared in Millennial Visions, Talia is also known as a member of the X Men team, fighting alongside her father, Nightcrawler, who is actually their field leader. She is a low level telepath with incredible superhuman agility skills. The ability to wall crawl, and the ability to fire powerful brimstone hex energy bolts, something inherited from both her father and her mother. Nocturne's physical appearance is also similar to her father's, a bit demonic looking, and of course, blue. All my blue X-Men. <laughs> Top 10 blue X-Men. Actually, I feel like there's a lot of X-Men that are that are blue. Or mutants that are blue, maybe? There's a lot of blue mutants, for sure. I don't know about X-Men team members. Number 8, Jimmy Hudson. Jimmy Hudson is the son of Wolverine from the ultimate reality of Earth 1610. His powers are similar to his father's, but in this reality, they're believed to work a little bit differently. As opposed to just being insane healing powers, Jimmy's power set in this universe as a mutant is believed to be based more in survival. So these powers aren't necessarily just about healing, but survival instincts and capability, meaning that Jimmy is just much better at surviving and evolving to survive than anyone else alive on the planet. And I mean that because in this reality, Wolverine eventually dies. So really, Jimmy is the only one left alive who's really good at surviving. Jimmy Hudson has also been bonded to a poison before and gained control of his poison, which are basically alien-like beings resembling symbiotes in look and abilities, but ultimately a different alien race themselves called poisons. So yeah. Jimmy is the son of Wolverine and Magneto's wife, Magda Lencher, although Wolverine urges him through a letter when the truth of his connection to Jimmy is revealed that he actually shouldn't focus too much on, you know, who his biological parents are. Jimmy was raised by adoptive parents. His dad actually served served with Logan in the war and agreed to look after Jimmy in his father's place, even giving the young boy his own family name. Hudson. Number seven, Esme. Esme is one of the main Stepford cuckoos. Well, I mean, I guess they're all pretty main, but you know what I mean. She's probably one of the most well known if we're talking offhand about how many of the cuckoos you can name. Esme and the other cuckoos are basically like the children of Emma Frost. Although, as I've said before, not children that she had consensually. And I didn't say that before in this list, but if you've heard me talk about the Stepford cuckoos and their relation to Emma, yeah. Instead, these were lab babies basically made from Emma's eggs that were stolen from Emma while she was in a comatose state. Esme, like the other cuckoos, is kind of like a genetic clone as well as a child of Emma's, and Emma actually does consider the cuckoos to be like her daughters. She treats them as though they were her own flesh and blood, and often her own responsibility, kind of stepping in to like play mom sometimes, although she does give them freedom to make their own mistakes. I guess what I mean is Emma isn't known for being like a controlling kind of parent. She's like, I'm here when you need me, otherwise you do you. More recently in the comics, Esme, known for her diamond form and power powerful telepathic abilities, teamed up and primarily dated Young Cable. Well, technically all the cuckoos were dating him at one point, though I would say Esme was basically the main, main squeeze of Young Cable and the sister that he was most taken by while he was dating all of them. And if you're like, whoa, how did that happen? The Stepford cuckoos, they share things because they're kind of like a hive mind. So they're like, we'll just all date this person. Is cool. Also, Krakoa. Everyone's dating everyone. <laughs> Number six, Akahiro. Akahiro is the son of Wolverine and his wife, Itsu. Unfortunately, before Akahiro was even born, his life took a turn 
for the worse. Along with inheriting his father's powers, I think he also inherited some of his tragic, tragic luck. Wolverine has the worst luck, I think. His mother, Itsu, was killed before she could give birth to him, assassinated. The child was believed dead, but in reality, he had been cut from her womb and possibly due to his inherited healing powers, miraculously survived. Although, that's not clear because usually your powers don't manifest until puberty, but sometimes your powers manifest when you're in the womb. I mean, look at Professor X with Cassandra Nova. Apparently that's a thing that happened. Akihiro would grow up and become a pawn of the villain known as Romulus. For most of his life, he'd also be known as Dokken, a cruel nickname given to him when he was a child being raised by his adoptive parents. The nickname was given to him because of his mixed race appearance, being part American and part Japanese. Though to be clear, his parents weren't the ones that gave it to him. It was people around his parents. Akahiro's powers are similar to Wolverine's, though his bone claws are a little bit different in terms of placement and appearance. Like his father, Akahiro is also known for being a skilled fighter as well. The apple does not fall far from the tree when it comes to fighting abilities. Number 5. Zandra Naramani Zandra is Professor X's daughter, who is created out of his genetic material and that of his lover's genetic material, the Shi'ar Magistrix Lalandra Naramani, after both of them were believed dead. As such, Zandra grew up to become Shi'ar royalty and also so spent a good amount of her life hunted because of this, with various parties attempting to use her for their own means. Xandra is an extremely gifted telepath. She can manipulate others' minds, read minds, and can create hyper-realistic telepathic illusions. Number 4. Ruby Summers She was the ex-offspring used in our oh-so-clickable thumb for the part 1 to this list, and although she was on my extended list for that part 1, my like long brainstorm that I came up with, I didn't get around to talking about her because I kind of reached a point where there were too many Summers children on that list. And I was like, I don't want to make this a top 10 children of Cyclops. We got that list. And also, that's not what this list is. What can I say? Sykes got strong genes. That's why Mr. Sinister is so obsessed after all and is known as the number one fan of the Summers Club. Scott Summers is Ruby's dad in the alternate reality she hails from and Emma Frost is her mother. This makes Ruby fairly powerful, not at the level of Hope or X-Man, but still pretty impressive. She's also super cool looking, which is an added bonus. Ruby hails from the alternate Earth of 1191, the home reality of famous X-Men ally Bishop. Ruby is also capable of emitting optic blasts like her dad and his brothers, but she has more control over when and how she emits these blasts. Unlike her dad, who's like, I literally need a visor. Ruby also comes with her ruby form, which like her mother's diamond form, grants her invulnerability and pretty much immortality. Number 3. Olivier Raven Olivier Raven is legally known as Olivier Olivier LeBeau, and is one of the alternate reality children of Gambit and Rogue. Honestly, I feel like there are not enough of these kids out in the multiverse. I don't know if that's just me. For a couple as famous as Gambit and Rogue, I mean, you just, you would think that we'd have a lot more kids from them, at least through the multiverse. Though admittedly, I'm not quite sure that Rogue and Gambit are really the kid having type, that, at least from what I've seen in the main continuity. They seem pretty content with just having their fur babies right now. So maybe they just aren't super into having kids as a family. Olivier hails from the reality of Earth 41001, the reality of Gen Next, a group Ollie is part of. He has powers similar to his mother's, except he has better control over them and is able to choose when and how much power, life energy, and memories he absorbs via physical contact, or doesn't absorb in cases where he just, you know, wants to make physical contact without using his powers. He can also absorb powers on a more permanent level, although he has less control, it seems, over when this happens. Like his father, he also seems to have some charm based powers. Either that, or he's just charming. Number two, Proteus. Proteus is the son of Moira McTaggart, who before I would count more as like an ex ally, but with recent revelations, we can definitely consider her a member in the same way we might consider someone like Charles Xavier. It turns out that Moira herself was a mutant this whole time, possessing unique reincarnation powers. She has also been known for being a leader and teacher of X Men groups before, including the time when she led a team that Professor X then recruited, sending them into Krakoa to rescue rescue the original X-Men. Not Krakoa as we know it now, but Krakoa as it was back in the day when it was like a monster island. Proteus is Kevin McTaggart, son of Joseph and Moira McTaggart. He is currently one of the five on Krakoa, and his powers as part of that team are mainly used to warp reality, allowing the non-viable eggs that egg, formerly known as gold balls, produces to become viable for life. These eggs are then used to grow new versions of fallen mutants. Proteus is an omega-level mutant who requires hosts. 
to survive. Initially, Kevin had a body, but now he's basically just pure energy. The hosts he controls and feeds off of eventually are exhausted and killed by that energy drain, making him not just a powerful psionic mutant, but also a powerful energy vampire as well, unintentionally. Number 1. Legion Legion is the son of Professor Charles Xavier that was conceived when he had a love affair with Gabrielle Holler, which is where Legion gets his legal last name, as his given name is David Holler. Legion is so powerful because he suffers from a severe disassociative identity disorder, where he has more than one hundred personas residing within him. Each persona has a number, many of names, and they each have their own specific power set that show up whenever they take over. Because of this, there is almost nothing that Legion isn't capable of. He can manipulate matter and time. We've seen him time travel and completely warp reality as a result of his possible abilities. He also has some pretty powerful hair, which I gotta say, I'm happy that he still rocks even now in the current modern day comics. He's still got that sweet hair. So tall. 10. Crusader. Crusader is the daughter of X-Men team member Rogue and Avenger Captain America. I know. A weird combination. But in the reality of Earth 9811, these two ended up together after the heroes and villains on Battleworld decided to call a truce. Remaining there, they settled down and raised families, putting their differences aside. I'm not sure how their relationship worked with Rogue not really being able to touch people in all of this point, or how she had a child considering that. But perhaps, like on Earth 616, she eventually was able to work through the trauma causing this side effect of her powers. Or perhaps the Captain America of Earth 9811 was immune to her involuntary voluntary energy and power draining effects. Either way, Sarah is their daughter. She gets much of her power from her mother, or rather she gets much of her power from the power her mother had absorbed in her day, meaning that Sarah is super strong, durable, and can fly. She is also considered worthy enough to lift Thor's hammer and wields her father's shield. Number 9. Wolverine I really wanted to put Laura Kinney higher up on this list because, well, I love her so much, but unfortunately the psionics are just always pushing some of my favorite and most powerful characters further down on these lists. Lists. Those psionics. Oh well. Laura Kinney as X-23 and now Wolverine is still one of the most powerful children of the X-Men around. Some argue that she is more clone, while others argue that she is more biological offspring of Logan, but in reality, she's kind of a bit of both. She was created as a female clone of Wolverine after his genetic material was combined with that of her creator, scientist Sarah Kinney. Sarah noticed that there were damaged spots basically in the samples of Logan's genetic material that they had, which was why their cloning process had been un unsuccessful up to this point. And so she used her own genetic material to patch those rough spots, which made Laura a female clone. Sarah was forced to carry Laura to term as a surrogate by her jealous colleague Xander Rice, as punishment for even creating the female clone to begin with, a strategy that admittedly had not been approved. Laura has power similar to her father. She has a regenerative healing factor and was also trained from birth to be a skilled fighter, bodyguard, and assassin. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to learn about more Children of the X-Men, there are a lot out there in the multiverse. Be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8. Chimera Chimera is the daughter of Storm and likely Black Panther who hails from the alternate reality of 13729. Yeah, sadly Storm and T'Challa have never had a child together in the main continuity. I know, it's a bit of a bummer. Unless they had like a real secret child that we just don't know about yet, but I doubt it. Chimera seems to have inherited the powers of her mother but also shares a connection to the Earth which allows her to draw on and harness its energy. She is also a skilled tracker and can communicate telepathically with animals. I'd also assume as she's the daughter of Storm that she's a skilled combatant as well. As while Storm is more well known for her goddess status and weather manipulation powers, she is also an extremely skilled fighter. And if she's Black Panther's daughter then she should definitely be a skilled fighter. I mean you got two amazing parents that are both amazing fighters. So. Just saying. Number 7. Charles Xavier II Charles Xavier II is the son of Charles Xavier and Mystique, if you can believe that. I know, it's pretty shocking. Charles Xavier number 2 was technically born into the reality of Earth 616, where we later find out that while Mystique actually took the form of Moira when giving birth, Charles actually knew that he was in a relationship with Raven, so it wasn't like a trick of hers. They were actually just wanted to be together, I guess. This version of Charles, however, is an all grown up one from the alternate future of Earth 13729. When his powers first manifested, he accidentally killed his adoptive mother and ended up later joining forces with his half brother, Raze, another child of Mystique's 
case, sired by Wolverine, another child of the X-Men. Charles Xavier II has a brilliant and conniving mind and, like his father, is an immensely gifted telepath, capable of using his powers to bend others to his will. Number 6. Polaris Polaris is the daughter of Magneto, and while you might not think of Magneto as being an X-Men considering, you know, he started out as an X-Men villain, he has also worked with the team before and even served as a member himself. Heck, at one point he was in charge of the whole New Mutants crew, let's not forget that. Magneto may have some questionable methods when it comes to getting justice that put him on the spectrum of villain, but I think at the end of the day he's just trying to do what's best for mutants. Or at least what he thinks is best for mutant kind. Polaris, like her father, also has magnetic based powers, which, like her father, are also pretty impressive. Polaris is considered an alpha level mutant and recently got to join the X Men team herself after being elected to join them in the Krakoan X Men elections. Psychic elections. Imagine if we could all just vote psychically. That would be awesome. That would be so much easier. You would just like sit down and you'd be like, who do I want to vote for? Mmm, done. Number 5. Cable Cable is the son of Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, non-X member Madeline Pryor, who later becomes the villain known as the Goblin Queen, and another X-Man's, Jean Grey, who kind of becomes like an adoptive mother but who also possesses Madeline's memories of raising baby Christopher because comics. Cable is Nathan Christopher Charles Summers, often referred to as just Nathan Summers or really just Cable. Although back in the day we did know him as Baby Christopher. Cable as a baby was kidnapped by Apocalypse and infected with the techno organic virus. This is the only thing that makes him weak-ish, but really he is still amazingly strong as he can even fend off that virus, containing it to one side of his body using his psionic powers. That in and of itself is pretty impressive as the techno organic virus is generally known for being being, well, unstoppable. Even with his psionic powers mainly preoccupied, Cable is still a hard one to beat, as he has so many combatant based skills that he brings to the table, and he is also an experienced time traveler besides. Number 4. Rachel Summers Yes, get ready, because many of the most powerful X kids out there just happen to be Summers related, so yeah, get ready for that. Honestly, I've always wanted to do a video just to explain the complicated nature that is the Summers and Grey family tree, which honestly is a lot, and it's very timey wimey. Rachel herself is one of those very complex kids of theirs. She is the daughter of Jean Grey and Scott Summers from the alternate Earth of 811. In that reality, she was made into a hound, a weapon used to hunt down mutants, even being one herself. Rachel is an extremely powerful telepath and telekinetic who also has the ability to chrono skim and manipulate time, even traveling through it. Rachel is also known for being an avatar of the Phoenix, at one time actually considered the true avatar for it, but then later having the power sort of dialed down to a mere echo of it. So she was no longer the true avatar, they were just like, you just have a thing, it's not even like the real Phoenix Forest, but it's like a version of it. Still, the seeming peace or echo of the Phoenix Force that resides within her has been known to flare up from time to time, or her connection to the Phoenix Force, however we want to see that, occasionally boosting Rachel to an off the charts level of power. But like I said, that doesn't happen all the time. Number 3. Hope Summers Hope is the adopted daughter of Cable, who was originally known as the Mutant Messiah Baby. Cable saved Hope from Bishop, who basically wanted to destroy her. In Bishop's reality, the Mutant Messiah would end up causing the event that led to the oppression and persecution of mutants. However, in Cable's reality, the mutant Messiah would grow up to become a savior, so you can see why these two were opposed on this topic. For the X-Men of Earth-616, the mutant Messiah was the first new mutant to have been born since basically M-Day, and so she brought hope to the mutants of the 616 reality. Cable body slided with hope to another time to raise her in safety. He would end up naming hope after her adoptive mother, his love who died, Hope, and she got the Summer's name from Cable himself. But although she looks a lot like Jean, she actually has no biological relation to the Summers or the Grey families, at least not that we know of. Hope's mutant abilities allow her to copy the powers of anyone within a certain range. Hope also gains access to these powers without struggling at all to use them, receiving them basically at their peak level and with the, the auto knowledge basically of how to use them. So if you're like, oh, she's gotta like figure it out, no, she's just like instant god mode with those powers basically. Number two, Scarlet Witch. Wanda is known for being one of the most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe. She has used her powers to completely warp reality the world over, and her chaos magic has pulled off other immensely world changing feats, such as flipping the alignment of all major heroes and villains in the comics during the events of Axis. Initially, her chaos magic powers were believed to be somewhat mutant in origin. In fact, they were kind of presented initially as like jinx like mystical mutant abilities during her first appearances. However, we've since learned that both Wanda and her superpower brother Pietro, aka Quicksilver, were never really mutants at all, nor were they related to maybe
Magneto. However, they still spent a good amount of their life around Magneto, who secretly believed them to be his children, and then another good amount of time thinking that he was their actual father, until it was revealed that this was all due to manipulation by the High Evolutionary. High Evolutionary just coming in and messing pretty much everybody up when it comes to their backstories and origins. Wanda herself has never really gotten along with the X-Men, especially since the events of M-Day, but she is still considered, I think, a part of Magneto's family, and a powerful one at that, regardless of her status as a mutant or a non-mutant. I know there are some people out there that want to be like, it never happened, but like, they still spent a lot of time together thinking that they were family, so I think we can still count it, friends. Also, make Wanda a mutant again. Do it. Make it happen. Give me Wanda and Quicksilver back. Number 1. X-Man X-Man is Nathaniel Grey, the lab-born child made by combining the genetic materials of both Jean Grey and Cyclops. So basically, like Cable, but if he had been made perfectly by villain Mr. Sinister. He actually hails from the alternate reality of AOA, Age of Apocalypse, Earth 295. Here, Sinister created him to use as his own weapon, but of course, Nate being so powerful, managed to escape Sinister and instead ended up being raised by Forge of Earth 295. He is considered one of the most powerful mutants of all time, which would also make him one of the most powerful children of the X-Men out there. Nate can warp reality, resurrect the dead, resurrect himself, travel to alternate Earths and dimensions, and even manipulate the time stream. He is basically the most OP of characters when it comes to the Marvel Universe. And if you've seen artwork of him, you will probably recognize him as someone who looks like Mutant Jesus, which yes, he is God level, so that is the point. Coming in at number 10, we have Raze. I love when we start getting alternate universe stuff because that's when things really get crazy. You can mix and match and get all sorts of super combinations that you want. And in this case, we have Wolverine and Mystique getting busy and making a baby that has both their powers. Raze is the combination of two heroes to make one of the best spies of all time. Because the thing about Mystique is you can break into almost anywhere because of your ability to shapeshift. But you're at high risk of getting killed because you don't have any sort of protection outside of your hand-to-hand -hand combat and skills with weapons. But then you mix in Wolverine's healing factor and some razor sharp claws and you have a soldier who can sneak into any place and take out the competition like no one else on the squad. While Ray's might not be the most powerful mutant of all time, you can't deny the utility and subtlety that someone like Ray's could bring to the table. I don't know if Ray's is a fitting enough name for someone who can sneak around and kill someone with claws. They should be called Badger or Sneaky Badger or Mongoose. Number 9. Chimera Chimera is the daughter of Storm from the alternate Earth of 13729. The same reality that Raze hails from, actually, weirdly enough. The identity of Chimera's father has never been confirmed, but many believe that she's the daughter of Storm's frequent love interest, Black Panther, which would be pretty cool, and I think is what we all want to happen here. We don't normally get to see what these two's future children would look or be like, so yeah. Chimera is a mutant like her mother and first appeared in Wolverine in the X-Men issue 36. She was created by Jason Aaron and Ed McGuinness and she possesses telepathic powers which allow her to communicate with and influence animals. She's also an expert tracker which implies to me that she's either the daughter of Black Panther or possibly also a Wolverine. A reality where Wolverine is kids with both Mystique and Storm though seems really intense. So. I'll just leave that in your mind. And before we get into our next point, just give this video a big thumbs up because that really helps us out, guys. Coming in at number eight, we have Megan Frost. I don't know what it is with Scott Summers, but it seems that he has a thing for telepaths or they have a thing for him. I'm not sure which way the pendulum swings, but either way, he has a few kids via telepaths. This time, it would be him and Emma Frost who would hook up and make Megan Frost. Megan comes to the table with a host of powers from her parents. She's got her dad's psionic blast and she's got her mama's telepathy. She also has a host of telekinetic powers, so it would seem that Scott Summers might have some hidden telekinetic powers in his genes because his other kids do as well. Now on the downside, Megan didn't get her mom's diamond skin, which is one of her most legendary powers, but she makes up for this by training hard in hand-to-hand -hand combat to the level where she could knock out anyone who might be able to sneak by her telepathy and get within punching range. Number seven, Rogue. Rogue is the daughter of Mystique and Destiny. Well, adopted daughter anyways. But they were both definitely more influential in the raising of Rogue than our own biological parents. So I consider them more of her parents than her actual parents, I guess? They are her actual parents. That's it. Before she ran away as a teenager, Rogue was raised in a hippie commune by her father and aunt after her mother disappeared. After she left, she ended up being approached by Mystique, who was told to seek her out by her long-term partner, Destiny. 
Rogue joined the two of them and they raised her like their own daughter. While Rogue is super awesome and powerful, Mystique is rarely associated with the X-Men, which is why Rogue ranks so low on this list. Basically, she's paying for her mother's generally more villainous tendencies, which has also factored into her story in the comics many times before. Poor Rogue. And also, honestly, poor Mystique. Coming in at number 6 we have X-23, the most famous child of Wolverine and certainly one of the most deadly. X-23, also known as Laura Kinney, is the clone of Wolverine but also kind of his daughter. It's a little bit of a weird backstory. She's a clone but she wasn't grown in a tube like most clones are, or I think they are. I don't know a lot about science. But she was actually grown in someone's womb, so that pretty much makes her a baby like any other baby, but she was for sure a clone. Are you confused? It's comic books, that's just how things are sometimes. But she's got all of her dad daddy's powers and she can cut you down faster than a Vitamix blender. She can show that she can be a prolific Wolverine replacement since after Logan dies she steps into the role as the new Wolverine and starts taking dudes out just like her old pa. And something very interesting about this character is that the first time she showed up it wasn't actually in comics but it was in the TV show called X-Men Evolution which was about a bunch of teenage versions of the X-Men all going to school together and having school problems you know and school stuff. Number 5 Shogo. Shogo Lee is the son of Jubilee, and while he might just be a baby currently, he's still been a powerhouse recently in the comics. Shogo was adopted by Jubilee after he was orphaned by a meteor strike. Sounds random, but it actually tied into stuff. Anyways, for Jubilee, adopting Shogo was very important and a big part of her growing up as a character. As far as we know, Shogo is not immune like his mom, but he did have some pretty cool powers while in other worlds. His imagination combined with fairy magic granted him the ability to turn into a dragon while in other worlds. A mother freaking dragon. A dragon. So yeah, he is basically a dragon whenever he's there in Otherworld, which makes him pretty powerful while on those planes. Saturnine herself also took a shining to him, and he was instrumental during the fight at the end of the Ten of Swords event. Coming in at number 4 we have Cable. I mean how do we make a list of children of X-Men and even think about leaving out Cable? Cable is the son of Scott Summers, better known as Cyclops, and the very powerful telepath Madeline Pryor who is the evil clone of Jean Grey. See Scott thought he was going to have a baby with Jean, but it was a trick. There's so many tricky babies in comic books. Well they had a baby, and that baby became insanely powerful, one of the most powerful telepaths. And then he becomes a skilled soldier, and then he goes back in time to work with his dad and sometimes against his dad. It's a very complicated situation. He also gets some sort of techno virus put into him and it makes it harder for him to use his powers because he has to constantly use his mind to fight off the techno virus. And he gets cloned and his clone is evil and has no virus. And he's buddies with Deadpool. The two of them work together in a straight man stooge double act kind of thing. Number 3. Polaris. While some might think of Magneto as more of a villain and therefore not one of the X-Men, he has been a member on and off throughout his history and has even led teams both within and without the main continuity. His daughter Lorna Dane and himself have one of the most strained relationships of all of the X-Men and their kids. This has been highlighted recently and ultimately comes down to the fact that initially Magneto manipulated Lorna, keeping the truth of him being her father from her. Not a great start. Even when that fact was revealed to her, he still hadn't been the best dad. And Polaris has even called him out on this before in the comics, reminding him that he doesn't even really know her. Yeesh. Still, the two teaming up together are able to perform some pretty powerful feats as both share the power of magnetism. Coming in number two, we have Legion. If you're Professor X's kid, you know you're going to be extremely powerful. And you would think you would be raised by the perfect dad and have one of the best fathers around. Well, even though Xavier is good at raising kids that he has no blood connection to, he isn't that good at making a strong connection with his own son. Part of it is just bad parenting. And the other part is Legion is a lot to deal with, even for the most powerful, responsible, and well-adjusted parents on the planet. See, Legion isn't just one mutant. He has split personality that live in his body and each one of them has their own mutation. So Legion can switch from personality to personality and change his powers. That's a pretty serious combination of abilities that probably work really well together. Well here's the thing, you don't need his powers to work together because several of these mutants are omega level. And when I say several, I mean around 200. And even the ones that aren't strong enough to wipe out existence itself, which Legion has done more than once, they are still strong enough to create an amazing storm of chaos. And there are new powers of personalities being created all the time inside Legion's body. Rogue was inside Legion's mind once, and she said there were over 1,000 personalities with new ones being born. Number 1. Dokken. Dokken is definitely one of the most iconic X-Men kids, I believe. 
Although, obviously, X23 is also up there. I'm sorry that I just dissed her by putting Doc in above her. And he's a really well-known X-Men kid, despite the fact that he has major daddy issues. Doc is now all grown up and is currently part of the X-Factor team, but he has been all over the place when it comes to his alignment since he was first introduced in the comics in Wolverine Origins, issue number 10. We've seen him as both a villain working against his father, even trying to kill him. We've seen him take on the Punisher alongside the Dark Avengers acting as Osborn's assassin. We've seen him tangle even with the likes of Deadpool and be manipulated by the lovable and very unstable Mirth. But he's also acted heroically from time to time and now seems to be more on the side of those things with X Factor. Though then again, Porcoa is a place for all mutants, so it's not like him being a bad boy would ever mean that he'd get kicked off the team. And when it comes to mutant bad boys, Dokken is definitely one of the baddest. I need to do a mutant bad boy list so I can put him at the top.